We're taking off to the coast of Northern California to drive the all new 2020 Subaru Outback. It's a picturesque location to get down and dirty with Subaru's sixth generation crossover wagon. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Viewer support is what makes these productions possible. Please do your part by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Now on with the 2020 Subaru Outback. The Subaru Outback is the best-selling model for Subaru. So when it came time for a redesign, the company didn't take it lightly. What we have here is basically an all-new car from the ground up. And Subaru really went all out with new materials, technology, and a fresh design in the hopes that it will not only continue to be a bestseller, it'll also draw new buyers to the brand. The 2020 Outback starts at 27655 What you see here is a touring model, which goes for 38355 including delivery. The turbo models start at 35905 with the Onyx Edition XT, which is what we'll actually be driving later in this review. But first, let's take a deep dive into features that are available across the board. The standard engine is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated boxer. It puts out 182 horsepower and 176 pound-feet of torque. The only transmission option is a linear Tronic CVT with 8-speed manual mode connected to Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive system. EPA is expected to rate this setup at 33 miles to the gallon on the highway and 26 around town. To open the back with a key in your pocket, you can just simply place your arm over the rear badge. This is useful for times when your hands are full. With the second row up, you're looking at 32.5 cubic feet of total storage capacity. For maximum loading, lower the second row with the handy pulls, and you get up to 75.7 cubic feet of cargo space. Note that this is using the new SAE measurements. If you use the old measurements, you're looking at 78 cubic feet. Under the floor is a repair kit in all trims, except for the Onyx Edition. That one gets a full-size spare. The second row has ample room for a full-size adult. Passengers also get an armrest with cup holders, USB sockets, and optional heated seats. Pull the integrated handle to recline slightly. Up front, the Outback has received a serious upgrade in design and materials. I have to remind myself that this is a Subaru. You know the cheap and cheerful company? This doesn't look cheap. The Napa leather is gorgeous, especially when paired with the coffee-toned interior trim like on this touring model. The driver's seat is nicely configurable with several power options. It was easy to find a comfortable position and then save it using the memory settings. Touring trims also get the new driver focus system, which detects distraction and can also be used to save driver presets using facial recognition technology. Like last year's model, the standard gauge cluster consists of two analog dials flanking a color digital display. This gives you all the critical information you really need. It's also where you can set the standard adaptive cruise control that now has an auto steering function with lane centering. We'll give that a try later. The semi-autonomous tech is part of the EyeSight safety system, which is now standard across all Outback models and also provides collision mitigation. Rounding out the active safety systems are available blind spot warnings with the indicators facing the driver, as they should. Notice you also get great visibility under that A-pillar. The rear view camera has cross traffic alerts and optional rear auto braking, which is nice. Of course, the star of the new Outback is the massive, huge, and totally tablet-like central display, which is standard on all but the base trims. And you better get used to it, because on this new Outback, Subaru simplified the cabin design by removing physical buttons and replacing them with software equivalents located in the tablet. Given Subaru's rough history with infotainment, I have to say that I found that a bit alarming at first. But after talking with the engineer in charge of the system, I will give them the benefit of the doubt here. This new system is equipped with two Denso processors. That's a huge improvement over the old system. This one separates tasks to make sure car stuff doesn't get bogged down by entertainment stuff, which is good. The design of the home screen isn't my favorite, but it is serviceable. Once you get into it, the buttons are big and easy to use. The screen is divided into three sections with general info on top, main controls in the middle, and environment on the bottom. Almost every setting and option does require a tap into the tablet now, even just 
enabling X mode, and that does take some getting used to. Thankfully, touchscreen compatible gloves are pretty common now because, you know, Michigan. Jumping into navigation, we can see it uses most of the display area. It is easy to use, even if it thought the closest Starbucks was 219 miles away for some reason. Uh, I should note these are pre-production cars, so again, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt here. Plugging into the 2.1 amp USB socket allowed me to use wired CarPlay instead, which is standard along with Android Auto in all trims. For CarPlay, it uses just part of the screen, a limitation that Subaru says is forced on them by Apple. They are in discussions. No, they don't know if it'll ever change. For music, Subaru still relies on Harman Kardon for their premium system, and it sounds very good. One nice thing about freeing up buttons is it really makes the interior look a lot cleaner. Though Subaru still provides hard switches for cabin temperature, if you want to turn on your seat warmers or coolers, you still have to take a dive into the display, however. As nice as the interior looks, there are still some pieces of piano black plastic in high use areas. I guarantee this will scratch even if you sneeze on it. In fact, here's what the same plastic looks like after a few hundred miles and someone probably wiping it with a dirty towel. Yeah, not great. So now that we've gone over most of the key features for this new Outback, it's time to finally drive one. For this, I've selected the Outback that I would be most likely to buy an Onyx XT. This particular car is painted ice silver metallic and came with the optional power moonroof, navigation upgrade, and rear auto braking. Prices you see it here, $37,750, including destination. Because this is an XT, it comes standard with the 2.4 liter turbo boxer that first appeared in the new Subaru Ascent. It features direct injection and has a twin scroll turbo. Power is pretty good, 260 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and up to 277 pound-feet of torque from 2,000 all the way to 4,800 RPM. This engine is connected to a high-torque Lineartronic CVT with 8-speed manual mode. EPA is expected to rate this setup at 23 miles to the gallon city and 30 on the highway. Unlike Outback turbos of the past, this one doesn't have a hood scoop. Instead, it has a ducting system that draws in air through the front. Hood scoops were cool, but they were also the aerodynamic equivalent of a small brick on the hood, so I really don't blame Subaru for making the change. Because this is an Onyx edition, it gets a blacked out grille with matching wheels, which look amazing. Onyx editions also get a full size spare under the floor, dual mode X mode, and a front view 180 degree camera, which tells me this one is targeting more adventurous buyers. Instead of leather, the interior has a two-tone gray scheme with something called StarTex covering the seats. This is water repellent and it doesn't heat up like leather can on a hot day. Also, no cows were killed for this interior, which is nice for animal lovers. And with that, we can finally start driving. Our adventure today will take us into the Redwood Forest just off the coast. On the way there, we will test out the basics. And as we get deeper into the woods, we'll find some way to test out X mode. And we're gonna go ahead and kick this off with a zero to 60. I'm gonna keep it in standard drive mode. I'm completely stopped. Three, two, one, go. A little slow on the uptake. Oh, but once that turbo kicks in, 40. 50 and 60. You know, it really wasn't too bad. Though to be fair, I was expecting a little bit more. With the time of just over eight seconds, I wasn't satisfied. So I kicked out my co-driver and tried again. Three, two, one, floor it. 40, 50 and 60. Okay, seven seconds, much better. Now we can move on. Does that passing power? Yes, it does. This Onyx Edition does come with paddle shifters. And yeah, you're saying, hey, it's a CVT. Why do I need paddle shifters? I'm right there with you. Of course, all Super Mapbacks come with the latest EyeSight system. Uh, this one's been updated, of course, they always seem to update it. Uh, and it has really cool little indicators up here that give me uh, something in my eye line that gives me data, such as uh, whether or not I go out of my lane, which it'll give me a little bleeps there, um, 
which then, of course, reinforces the data that's on my screen. It's a nice way of giving me information without giving me too much information. We're gonna go ahead and try this new lane centering tech. I'm gonna go ahead and click turn on the auto steer. I'm also gonna turn, wait, turn on cruise control, turn on auto steer. Oh, now auto steer is active. Now I can just take my hands off and let it do the driving. Okay, now we got a nice slight bend in the road here. Let's see if this will autopilot us around the bend. Doing a pretty good job. And it's really staying down that center lane, which is the important thing. It's rock solid centering. It's not doing this ping ponging that you get. Um, Honda, talking to you. Interesting note here, if you get an XT in limited or touring trims, they come with uh, acoustic glass on the sides as well as on the front. However, the Onyx Edition doesn't come with the side acoustic glass. This is just normal glass. Uh, I guess the theory is, is that younger drivers really want to feel like they're part of the experience a little bit more. I Of course, most Subarus aren't going to be climbing cliffs. What they're going to be doing is bombing down forest roads like we have here. And honestly, this is, this is a lot of fun. Oh, stay, stay, pay attention. Dirt road. That is a cliff, by the way, so got to make sure not to fall off that. It's doing what I want, and I'm able, it, it's very neutral for what it is. And that's, I think that's, that's kind of overall the more important thing. Now, on an Outback, I can't really complain about performance driving because it's an Outback. I mean, let's just be real here. What is this really going to be used for, right? It's going to be used for roads like this. You know, I can toss it around on these really uneven dirt roads. I mean, these are pretty rutted. And not only is the suspension smoothly taking me through it, you know, relative, um, it also, it's quiet. It's really, really quiet in here. I mean, I mean, what's the one thing we think of with Subarus? They're kind of loud, cantankerous, and you know, granted that might be an old opinion of them, but I mean, this this new Outback it brings it to a new level. This is really, really, really quite nice. And this isn't even with the sound deadening side windows like the upper trims get on the other XT models. That's a drop. So as we head deeper and deeper into the forest, the road is actually getting a little bit of challenge. We have some real tight hairpins that are surrounded by vegetation, uh, so we don't want to scratch the sides of the vehicle. And then we also have some ruts that are really deep. And uh, I have to admit, sorry to Subaru, the uh, underside of your nose is taking a little bit of a beating. I'm sure we'll be fine. For those of you unaware, X-Mode is Subaru's way of giving added capability through uh, software in their vehicles. What it does is it takes advantage of features in the all-wheel drive system, the transmission, and the throttle to be able to deliver power in the way that is best for certain situations. We have snow dirt, and we also have deep snow and mud. So the difference with snow and dirt is basically X-Mode Type 1. It'll allow for a little slip in the wheel so that you can get uh, some momentum. Deep snow mud is what the second mode is in X mode, and that provides a lot more slip. Oop, that's... While I continue to dart through the forest looking for a good place to test out X mode, let me introduce you to the engineer in charge of Outback. This is Horisan, who will give you the Subaru perspective on X mode. So one is basically focus on the stability. So customer choice the one always, especially the own eyes so or on very three pillow. So it's always you know focus on the stability. But the two is more aggressive. Cut the traction control and then get the more better traction, especially on the sound and the more muddy load. That's its concept to making the two mode. To really put X mode to the test, I'm going to take a hard left up a very steep incline. So we should be able to really see that power distribution come into play. So 
what I'm going to do here first is first try it without X mode on. I'm just spinning. No progress. Now let's do a demonstration of X mode. What I'm going to do is put it into deep snow and mud, which is X mode type 2. Now this isn't mud, but there is a lot of slip. Um, because it is a really dry, loose surface, and we are only going to have a couple wheels with grip at any given time because of the acute angle. So let's see how it goes. It's working it. Ugh. Okay, so deep snow mud, maybe it's too much wheel spin. So we're going to go ahead and put it into regular snow and dirt, which will allow for a little wheel spin, but be way more aggressive in locking down those spinning wheels and sending power to the opposite. You got it, you got it, you got it. Oh, it's doing a good job. Ha! Come on, you can do this. Yes! With X mode on, the front axle emulates a limited slip differential by breaking the slipping wheel to redistribute power. Then when the back wheel start to slip, it does the same thing. Here, X mode 1 was just fine. However, if we encounter deep sand or snow, we would have needed more slip to maintain momentum. That is where type 2 comes into play. For more information, you can see our Forrester video that covers dual mode X mode in more detail. As we can see, I couldn't have made that with regular drive modes. I really needed something like X mode to really get more aggressive with that traction control system and put power where it needed to go. Did an excellent job. Overall, I love it. I really love it. It is still an Outback, so you're not gonna get something you didn't get before. You're not gonna get a low range gearbox. You're not gonna get crawl control. Uh, you're not going to get, you know, insane turbo performance because this is an Outback and it is as much of an Outback as it ever was. It's just a better Outback and everything that it had before it still has is just better. Yeah, it looks like the road just kind of falls off a cliff and it's because it does. Wow. That's quite a view. <laughs>